Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for our pre-service meditation here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. So for the next 10 minutes, we're just going to take this time to turn within and just bring our awareness to the now moment. So I invite you to take a nice deep breath in. And as you release it, just release any thoughts about the future or the past, what has been, what is yet to come. Just come into this now moment, allowing your body to relax, And we use the breath as a way of just keeping our awareness on the present moment. And so turn your awareness to your breath. Don't try to control it or change anything about it. Just watch the in-breath and the out-breath. The miracle of life reshaping itself with each breath. And if it helps you to stay focused, you might want to silently say to yourself, breathing in on the in-breath and breathing out on the out-breath. And if your mind wanders, which it's inevitably going to do at some point, 
This is a great way to practice witness consciousness, non-judgment. Just notice when you become aware that your mind veered off from the breath, just notice where it went. Maybe label it as thinking, feeling, hearing. And then once you've noticed, gently, compassionately, bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so I invite you to gently bring your awareness back into your surroundings, just being aware of your body in the chair or whatever you're seated in. Take a nice deep breath. And as you release that, just bring your awareness back into the room and open your eyes. So for those of you who joined us during the meditation, welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening, either on Facebook Live or on Zoom. Welcome. Let's begin with our opening chant. God is in this place, led by a wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Margaret. So let's join in consciousness to anchor that truth that God is in this place. Because truly, there is only one power, and that is the power, the life, the love, the infinite goodness that is God, that is the one presence out of which all creation comes into being, and that lives and moves and expresses itself throughout creation. God indeed is in this place because God is in each and every one of us gathered for this service this evening. I absolutely know that we feel the presence of, of God as that vibration of love that allows us to feel our connection even if we're not physically in the same place. It is that vibration of love that inspires each person who's of service this evening. It is that vibration of God's love and creativity that moves through Sam and Margaret this evening, inspiring us with their artistry. I absolutely open myself to being that vessel through which God speaks the message that we've all come to hear this evening, myself included, that through this message, we awaken to that next level of knowing that we are one with the divine and to experience that truth more fully in our lives. And so I give thanks for all the blessings that I know we receive in our time together. Knowing they all come from God, I say thank you, God, and I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God. This service is blessed, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. So please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. in the light of morning and let you shine on me a while I could feel your power upon me and the sweet warmth of your rays they made me smile and all the blades of the grass stood shimmering as if they understood to be effortlessly bathed in your blessings is very, very good. And so it is, and so it shall be. We don't have to justify any more than the lilies of the field or the bird in flight has to bloom or has to fly. They do it cause they're called to. They do it cause it's what they've come here to be. And the moment you serve your own heart is the moment you are. How strange that we toil and labor in guilt and blame and compromise Driven by the voice of doubt which drowns out what the inner truth belies If we could just breathe and feel and listen to the lover's constant beat God's the host of this great banquet and has invited us to eat. And so it is, and so it shall be. We don't have to justify any more than the lilies of the field or the bird in flight has to bloom or has to fly. They do it cause they're cold. They do it cause it's what they've come here to be And the moment you serve your own heart Is the moment you are free There is enough And there is time There is no need Only endless supply Beautiful, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Margaret. Hmm, you are serving your own heart. <laughs> it shows. Thank you. So, 
This evening, I wanted to look at this idea of savior syndrome. And this was inspired by a uh, colleague, a fellow minister in Science of Mind, sharing a conversation with me that she had had with her in-laws who were curious about our church, our teaching, and knowing that they were members of a very traditional Christian church, she decided to begin with common ground, you know, sharing that we promote the teachings of Jesus. We draw a lot from the teachings of Jesus. And that initial reaction from her in-laws was that they were very pleased to hear that. When they heard that we also honor and draw wisdom from other great masters and philosophers, they were a little bit less happy. That less happy turned into, I would say, what she described as displeasure um, and even grave concern when they asked her, do you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior? And she had to answer, no, not the way you would uh, expect. Uh, she said, we see him as a master teacher and we see him as the great example of what we can all evolve to. Um, and you know, I think I should insert that that's not an idea that's unique to science of mind. There, uh, certainly Hinduism sees uh, Jesus as a, a master teacher, a highly evolved being that was here to teach us. And there are branches of Christianity that also would agree with that. Mystical Christianity would uh, teach that, but you know, the in-laws weren't in that, uh, that kind of tradition, so they were generally concerned. You know, they even apparently asked her if she would at least proclaim, if she's using the teachings of Jesus, couldn't she just proclaim that, you know, she saw him as her savior so she could attain salvation? Now, this friend, this colleague, wanted to be authentic, but she also realized that this was causing concern for in-laws. So she said, you know, here's what I believe. I believe that if I really abide by the core teachings of Jesus, and she left out, or any of the other great masters of all the world, world religions, she just focused on Jesus. She said, I believe if I really follow his teachings, that I will attain salvation. And that wasn't really what they wanted to hear, but at least it softened you know, their concerns and they were able to drop the subject and move on to something else. Now, I should probably explain, because we don't really talk much about salvation in this teaching. So you know, what did my colleague mean when she said that she could attain salvation by following the core principles taught by Jesus or other great masters. So if you look at the terms uh, theologically, salvation is the deliverance of the soul from sin and its consequences. So the soul for us would be say our individual consciousness as part of the greater consciousness of the divine and I should remind us that the word sin, in its original meaning, it was an archery term for missing the mark when you didn't you know, hit the mark. And it really means error. So if we think of sin as an error, spiritually, the ultimate error that we commit or the ultimate error that we fall into is the thinking or the belief that we are separate from God. It's a sense of duality, that there's God and something else, God and us, God and other people, when in fact, we are all living within the one life of God and that one life is living and expressing itself through all of us. Our spiritual journey is about awakening to the truth that we're all one with the one 
We're all interconnected within the one. You know, God's nature lies fully and equally present within each of us, but part of that nature is free will, and we've been uh, created with that free will to discover that true nature of God as our core nature and to experience it as such. So our salvation, our rising above, our false sense of being separate from God, you know, that, that would be an inside job. You know, we have to discover that for ourselves. And so that experience of salvation would be by discovering our oneness with God. The more we awaken to that truth, then we are freed of the consequences of feeling separate, the suffering that we experience and that we bring into the world um, due to that false sense of duality. So when I say that's an inside job, that it's up to us individually to awaken to that core nature of the divine. It doesn't mean that we just go it alone, uh, that we don't allow ourselves to be supported by others, or that we don't draw inspiration from the great masters who came here to impart their wisdom to us. But <clears throat> what we need to realize is that those who support us, the ones that you know, in any way that others support us, that we are supported in life. And the great masters that came here, like Jesus and Buddha and Krishna, they were channels through which God's love and support and giving us wisdom came to us. They individually are never the source. God is the only source. So, before we get haughty and start proclaiming, well, in our teaching, we don't believe in any earthly being or condition being our savior. <laughs> Aren't we great? <laughs> Let's recognize that we all fall into savior syndrome patterns a lot, <laughs> a lot. And let me explain that. Whatever beliefs or perceptions we carry that negate the knowingness of our oneness with the infinite source of all good, that right there we start falling into savior syndrome because when we feel separate from God, or in any way that we feel separate from God, we start looking out to the world outside of us as our source of good. So things and people in the world become our saviors. A couple of examples. Ever found yourself in a pattern of thinking like, when I get that job, I'll finally be happy and fulfilled. We're worshiping the job savior. When I finally meet my soulmate, I'll be happy. We're worshiping the soulmate savior. When I finally find a graceful way to get out of this relationship with this person who clearly isn't my soulmate, we are worshiping the, the way out gracefully, Savior. When my health improves, or you know any of the ways that we tell ourselves, when this condition changes or when this thing manifests, then I'm fulfilled. Those things become our saviors. How many of us have, at some point in our lives, uh, worshiped the lotto savior? You know, the list can go on ad infinitum. The point is, when we catch ourselves feeling like we can't be happy or fulfilled until some worldly condition changes for us, we're feeling separate from God. And that's when we can turn to one of our core tenets in this teaching of change your thinking, change your life, we can start working to change our thinking in order to change our experience, to change from feeling separate from God to remembering our oneness with the one. When we catch ourselves seeking that worldly experience that we see as our savior, we want to reverse our thinking. And what I mean by that is 
any good that we attract, any good that we manifest in the world originates from God's nature in us. It's that boundless vibration of God's love in us, seeking that ever greater knowingness and expression of itself through us that opens us to new experiences of love. But the love is there right here and now. We don't suddenly uh, get infused with love when we find that person to love. No, it's the love in us that opens us to having a loving relationship with that person. I remember hearing about a man who won, or no, sorry, he didn't win the lottery. He had a lottery ticket that had all but one of the numbers of the winning ticket. So let's say if there are five numbers, I can't remember how many there are, he had four out of five. And I think because of that, he did win something, but he didn't win anything nearly as great as the, you know, the, the uh, jackpot. And from that point, when he knew he had come that close, he felt such a sense of lack because he was always thinking about what life would be like if he had won if he had just had that one other number on his ticket. And it really consumed him, and a therapist actually helped him in adjusting his perspective to recognize how much good he had right now, how much abundance he had in the moment. You know, he really trained him to change his thinking from, if I had won that, I would have this, to how much good do you have right now? Because, you know, one thing we know is if we're not able to appreciate the good that we have right now and really be aware of it, when more comes our way, we rarely can hold on to it or we're still going to be looking for more beyond that. There are studies that have shown that an amazing percentage of people who do win the lotto end up back where they were in a very short period of time because they don't have the consciousness of abundance to, you know, um, to feel the abundance of what they have and not overspend and you know not feel like they need always need more. And this man uh, explained that until that experience, he didn't realize how much he had taken the good that he had in his life for granted. And so without his circumstances changing dramatically, by changing his awareness and being grateful, he got to experience abundance in a greater way than he ever had, and probably in a greater way than he might have had he had that other number on his ticket. And so it's not that winning a big sum of money, getting a new job, stepping into greater health, manifesting that loving relationship that we're seeking. It's not that any of those things aren't wonderful. I mean, they are the outcome, outpicturing of God's nature in us always seeking that new way to experience and express itself through us. But those experiences are not what allow us to be happy or to feel empowered or to feel successful or joyful or to experience any of the quali other qualities of God's nature. Those qualities are in us right now, and we need to accept that, and as we do, that's what saves us from the sense of lack, the sense of not enoughness that we often suffer from in our human experience. So when we catch ourselves looking outwardly for that good that will save us, from our discontent, that's time to look inward and remind ourselves that outer experience that I am looking to manifest is an aspect of God's love or of God's nature as love or joy or abundance, whatever it is, to be aware that that represents that aspect of God's nature in me just fulfilling itself in some new way. That's what allows us to feel the connection and appreciate 
that nature of God in us right now while being open to that next experience, that next way that God might find to manifest through us. It opens us to greater good while allowing us to be more than content, but to feel plentiful in the now. And I just want to touch on also that the flip side of this is to realize this just as nobody or no circumstance in the world is our savior, we are also not anybody's savior. I know sometimes because we feel that impulse of God to give of itself unto others to fulfill that vibration of love, we can sometimes feel like we have to be the savior to others when they're in trouble. And certainly, absolutely, we should be open vessels to give and share of God's love generously, to give whatever can be given through and as us, but just as others can be channels of love and support to us, we can be channels of love and support to others, but we are not anyone's source. Knowing that they are one with God can help us to know when this is not mine to do and to be at peace with that, it also, by us knowing that they are one with God because we're all interconnected, it contributes to their awakening to that truth and opening to the greater ways to experience God's goodness beyond what they're experiencing in the moment. So by turning our awareness back to our oneness, our oneness with God, God is our source, knowing that truth for others that's what saves us from our delusions of being separate from God, separate from good. And that's what opens us to experiencing God's nature in ever expansive ways. So I invite you to just take this moment to turn your attention inward. And call to mind any human experience that you're seeking to manifest where you're telling yourself, when that happens, when that manifests, I'll be happy, I'll be fulfilled. And whatever that is, as you imagine that experience manifesting, notice what aspect of God's nature you would experience more fully. And notice how you can feel that vibration of God's nature because it already exists within you. Open to feeling that vibration in you, acknowledging and appreciating how it's expressed in your life today. Yes, it can take on new forms, but it's right there right now in your life today in some way. And knowing that truth, just know that that brings forth the perfect new expression of itself, whether it's in the form you imagine or some other way. And now I invite you to call to mind any individual or situation in the world that you want to fix, change into something more positive. And notice that this impulse to make things better is God's love in you seeking to give of itself through you. So while being an open vessel through which God does offer support, just being willing to be a channel, also acknowledge that you yourself are not their source. Know that God guides you to do anything that God seeks to do, to be of support through you. But there are infinite other ways that God is able to provide for all individuals. And so from this place, 
knowing that God is the source of all good. Let us be channels through which this truth can be more fully known as we know the truth for some of the human conditions that we tend to face on our journey in life. Realizing that each and every being, every part of creation is filled with the nature of God. It is the one life living through and as all that is, including me and every being everywhere. Let us join in knowing that for those that are struggling with a sense of change because things in the world are always changing, that that eternal nature of God is changeless. It is birthless, deathless, it is ever available when something departs from us on this human plane. It is there to be experienced in a new way. We can never be separate from it. And let this bring peace to those who are feeling unsettled with any sense of change, where there are experiences of dis-ease and discord, let us know the nature of God that is a vibration of perfect health, perfect wholeness, and that that vibration absolutely reveals itself and eradicates any form of dis-ease and discord. It is that which reveals the perfect pathways into health, wholeness, and well-being. It is that vibration of God's health that is producing all the versions of healing of the pandemic that is unfolding, but that we are rising above. Let us know that that presence of the divine is a creative energy that is always there to give of itself in unique ways through each of us. So those who are feeling creatively challenged, let us know that God is right there absolutely guiding each one to the perfect destination to give of their unique talents, their unique gifts, and to be valued and appreciated. Where there is any experience of lack or limitation, let us remember that this divine presence is infinite. It knows nothing of lack and limitation. And as we know this truth, we know that greater abundance is revealed, a greater capacity to give and receive good in infinite ways. And let us absolutely remember that that core nature of the divine in all parts of creation is love. And as we know this truth, for those who may feel separate from it, it aligns them with that vibration of love to feel greater love for self and others. And knowing that that vibration of love is always one that is for greater good, let us set our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us know that we're feeling the impulse of God for that greater knowingness, that greater realization of itself. And as we know that God is in all of these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's with a heart just filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is already so in the mind of God, and so it is, and together we say, Amen.
Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. Um, so there are several different ways that you could give. Uh, you should be seeing a link right now uh, so you can uh, do your donation online. And that is, if you're not seeing it, um, or if you need to get to it later, it's our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And that takes you straight to our donation page. Or you can text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And you'll, you can also call into the church office after the service. We'll be here for 20, 30 minutes after service. You can make your donation via credit or debit card. The number is 818-762-7566. And of course, I know many of you like to continue mailing in your checks. We are glad to receive your tithes, however you're sending them in. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity. So with that feeling of giving and the joy of giving, let us hold our hands to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you again, Margaret and Sam. <laughs> so as we bring our service to a close, I would like to begin by thanking everyone who's been of service this evening. Uh, first, let me start. Well, this today I'll start with the people in the sanctuary. We have to one week this way, one week the other. Uh, Adam, thank you as always for the support back there in the sound booth to make sure we're seen and heard to Doreen and Blair, who are making sure all our technical stuff is running smoothly, um, and to Nikki, who is on camera two this evening. Thank you so much. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you to our incredible musical support, to Sam and Margaret. The great I just want to say thank you for that message. There was never any time to applaud, but that was really oh. yummy. Oh. <laughs> Well, thank you for thanking me. <laughs> and uh, of course, thank you to all of you for joining us this evening. Um, oh, now I need to thank people out in virtual land. Uh, thank you to Christine Crawford and Carrie Brown, 
practitioners who are holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, on Zoom, thank you to Barbara Berg, Lynn Romanowski, Brenda Jordan, and Ray Regan for your support. And to um, Melissa Allen, once again, thank you for supporting us there on Facebook Live. We could not be getting together this way without all of you, so thank you. Thank you for your support. Okay, few announcements. Um, again, just a reminder that if you want to make a donation over the phone, we'll be here uh, after the service. Just give Doreen a couple of minutes to get over to the church office, 818-762-7566, and uh, she can take your donation via credit or debit card. NHCRS.org forward slash give is how to get to the donation page uh, online or texting the word give to 818-457-3419. Prayer with the practitioners available uh, on Zoom after the service. So if you're on Facebook Live, just uh, get onto our Zoom. You can get it through our website, nhcrs.org. And uh, if you want to just visit with the congregants, I'll be joining people out on the Zoom patio. If you want to uh, receive prayer from practitioners, just let the Zoom host know, and they'll connect you up one-on-one uh, -on -one for uh, prayer with a practitioner in a private breakout room. You can email your prayer requests to prayer at nhcrs.org, or call into the church office, and option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we check those every evening and uh, send the emails and voicemail requests that we've gathered uh, to all the practitioners so you'll be well supported in prayer. Um, next Wednesday, so we have a wonderful practitioner, Liz Racy, who is here this evening getting the lay of the land, uh, who will be here for a special Wednesday evening service. Uh, reminder, service start, uh, meditation before service at 6.50, and service itself is 7 p.m. We hope you'll come back on Facebook Live or Zoom. And uh, Liz's topic next week is, it's never too late. And I happen to know that she has some pretty powerful examples of that truth to share. So really hope you will tune in and be inspired. I know you'll be inspired if you tune in, so. Uh, our women's group will be meeting this Sunday on Zoom at 1 p.m. All women are welcome. Also, we will be holding our annual meeting for the members of North Hollywood Church, and it will be held on February 21st, that's Sunday at 11 a.m., a.m., right after the Sunday services, that'll be on Zoom. Uh, the Zoom link is the same link used for our Sunday or Wednesday service. So just come on. If you usually go on Facebook Live and you're a church member, we invite you to please join us on Zoom that Sunday. Um, and so you'll uh, be able to be part of the annual meeting. A notification email was uh, sent out. If you did receive it, please check your spam or uh, junk. Um, folder and if you don't find it there and want us to resend please call the church office and let terry prince know uh, also want to let you know that on saturday february 20th at 10 a.m we will be doing a memorial service on zoom for our beloved practitioner scott vance who made his transition a few weeks ago and so uh, just a heads up and you'll be able to get the information for that on Zoom. Um, a reminder that our Zoom virtual patio is open 20 minutes before and uh, also after the service to connect with your fellow congregants. Our men's group meets every Sunday from 11 to 11.30 on Zoom. All men are welcome. And our Zoom meditation continues every Monday through Saturday, 8 to 8.15 a.m. It's just a wonderful experience. Some of us are in our jammies, just <laughs> meditating together. It's great. It really is. I love connecting with everyone for our morning meditation. So want to know more about what's going on? Go to our website, nhcrs.org, 
And you can also sign up to receive our weekly e-blasts or monthly newsletters there. So you can know uh, ahead of time what's happening here at the church. With that, just want to say thank you again for joining us. Let's turn within one more time. Just feeling that gratitude once again for how that wonderful, infinite, invisible spirit, that one that we call God, has made itself felt and known and realized throughout our time together. I know that through this service, we have all been touched and awakened in ways that we may not even realize right now, but that we have tapped into that core nature of the divine and healing and revealing has occurred and we get to carry that higher consciousness as we go forward with our lives and I know that that higher vibration of consciousness ripples out and touches others. And so I give thanks for all the blessings we've received and how they multiply as we go forward. And in gratitude, I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Let's join together in song one more time. Amen.